you're joining us for Hope Today, where we're all about giving you a daily dose of inspiration and encouragement so you can have a future. And I hope I'm Sydney Goldman here with Tom Hollis and Amy Schaefer. And guys, it is such a great day to just inspire people. It is a great day. Hey, I'm sitting in the middle of the couch today. Isn't that weird? I got to go like this. Now it's like in why, the middle. It's why, it's why, it's why I'm watching a tennis match here. Anyway. What's that game you play where you're trying to skip keep away, keep away from the guy in the middle? Oh, like hot the potato? Over here. Uh, no, no. Hot potato. <laughs> That's awesome. Anyway, we're what so glad that you're with us today, and it, we believe that God has plans for for this day. You know, before the foundation of the earth, God had a plan for this day, and uh, we're glad that you've joined us. So we're gonna all search what get that plan is and what God has for each of us today. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's a great day to be alive, to be serving God, to come together. And really what we do here is it's like we're sitting at a table and we're just breaking the bread and we're just enjoying life and we're bringing God's peace and hope and love. And like the prayer says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We can literally have guys days of heaven upon the earth. It's so good. I love that. It yeah. is so true that that's what we're all about here. Just to inspire you and encourage you, you know, we're all in this together. So it's such a joy for us, no matter where you're joining us from, from Pittsburgh, Orlando, Central Florida, West Virginia, California, wherever you are, we are just so glad that we have the opportunity to come into your home every day to sprinkle a little joy yeah. into your life. And we always love to do it, Tom, with the Word of God. That's right. We have a scripture for you today that will apply so much to what we're going to talk about today. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble. That's James 1, 27. And guys, it's interesting, in their trouble, my Bible, my translation says in their distress. And that's, that's the situation that, uh, again, orphans and widows, people that, if we want to say we're religious, right. it's not about church, okay? That's good. We should go to church. You should be involved in a church. If you don't have one, Amy's got one for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a great church that we, that we should be involved in church, but it, real religion goes beyond that to where it's affecting someone else's life. Yes. And, and Sydney, it's, it's the least of these really, mm -hmm. orphans and widows, those that are in the greatest need that are, need the greatest ministry. Yeah, that is so true. And I just even think about, you know, even in my own life, you know, we do have like a, a widow that lives below us. And my husband, I try to think of ways to just like encourage and lift her spirits up. Or just so many people are orphaned. I know like with the orphan spirit, there's also a lot of people that are fatherless, but we have a great father in heaven. No matter if your mother or your father forsakes you, just know that the heavenly father is for you and he is with you. Right, Amy? Right. I love what the Message Bible says. It says to reach out to the homeless and the loveless. And if you just think about all of the people that are th like the widows, like they, they, they don't have that covering, they don't have that help. There's, there's a sense of loneliness, there's a sense of isolation. And I don't know, maybe you're feeling like that today. Like I feel alone, I feel orphaned, I feel like nobody's there for me, I feel like lost in the shuffle. Guess what, you're not alone and you are noticed and you do belong, you belong to the kingdom of God. You're a son and a daughter, you're a brother, you're a sister. And so I pray like Sydney said that you know how much the father loves you because you do belong. You know, there's one, one other thing I, I wanna, and, and since you have the message Bible up, the, 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 uh, the rest of that verse says this, it says, and to keep oneself unstained by the world, which is yep. interesting coupling of those things together. So it's acts of service and love to people, but also keeping oneself unstained and that's not just, obviously, we shouldn't engage in immorality and things that are, are blatantly wrong, but also our attitude towards those people, yeah. those people, whoever they are, widows and orphans, you know, we can say, well, it's their, no, we're supposed to love them. That's a way to keep ourselves unstained by the word. How does, how does the Message Bible say that? Well, and it says to guard against corruption from this godless world. Oh, okay. Isn't Great. that so true? This scripture to me is such a good reminder that, that life is not all about me that we can become so self-consumed as believers and as Christians that we forget about the people that are in need, the people that we need to reach out to. Yeah, we definitely, this world is a lot of turmoil and tribulation. And you know, every day we like to come and bring you a little something to bring up your spirits. And today our dear friend and worship leader, Denise Graves, she posted an encouraging message and song on Facebook and we wanted to share it with you today. Take a look. Felt like I was supposed to say to you, um, it's time to sing you know as well as I do in this 
maddening season of crazy uh, between being, you know, quarantine, COVID and fear and anxieties at an all time high and politics and ugliness on Facebook. Please, everyone, can we just not engage in some of these conversations it's real ugly? Instead, how about we sing? How about we sing? Sing a new song to God, not of woe and misery. We're going to give this a shot and you're going to sing with me. When my heart is over, overwhelmed, you say, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Who have been a shelter for me? You say. the rock that is higher than I. That is actually Tom and Amy, a song that Denise said she created out of a difficult time in her life. We just wanted to share that, encourage that with you today because so many people need to know we need to keep our eyes fixated on Christ because he is the rock that no matter what's going on in our world, that's where our hope is found. That, that is great. I mean, I, I can't really sing like Denise Graves, but <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> it is good to bring a song into the situation and whatever we find ourselves. That's right. And even like in the Israelites, when they went to war, what did they do? They sent out the singers and the musicians and the Levites went ahead. And that is how you win the battle by worship and by praise. Our next guest was presented with an opportunity to change a life. And when he said yes to whatever God asked, it has led to dramatically saving hundreds. Philip Cameron shares this powerful story in his new book, Our Bummer Lamb. Philip, welcome to Hope Today. Hey, how are you, Amy? I'm so glad to be with you and Tom and Sydney. I'm so pleased to be here. And uh, this, this is really important because when we finally got our bummer lamb from Moldova, uh, from Romania, we took him to your program and your network, and uh, it was the first place he was seen by the public. Aww. So you guys were part of this. Well, that's, that is precious. And I cannot wait to hear about this story. But let's kick it off with what do you mean by a bummer lamb? A bummer lamb is a lamb that's rejected by his mother. And uh, when I was a kid back in Scotland, my mother would take us out and we would watch in the springtime the lambs being born. And they would dance and frolic and the, it was amazing to watch them just a few, a few minutes old. But once in a while, a lamb would be rejected by its mom and when it went to feed, she would kick it away or butt it. And the farmer, if the farmer wasn't there, the lamb could even be killed. And the shepherd would go and pick up the bummer lamb and take it home with him and, and hand feed it and keep him beside the fire in his house, lay it on his chest at night to let him, just to, for, for comfort. And when the lamb was fit and, and old enough to go back to the flock, he would take it back. But the bummer lamb never forgets the shepherd. Mm. And whenever a shepherd goes to the field, the bummer lamb is the first one to run to the shepherd because he remembers the love and care that the shepherd did when he was rescued. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we found a bummer lamb in an orphanage in Romania 30 years ago, and his name was Andrew. Well, I cannot wait to hear your heart behind this story and this redemption story. Where did it begin? I, I believe that your dad had a significant yeah. part to play in this story. <laughs> I was sitting in my house in Montgomery, Alabama. I've been on with CTV and all the, t I've been in all the different nationwide television programs. All what I thought was important was all the boxes were being ticked off and my phone rang, it was my dad. And he opened the conversation with this, this statement that our baby's dying. Mm. And I said, what are you talking about? 
and he'd been watching the news, the BBC had been following the freedom fighters in Romania. And uh, they discovered that the orphanages were filled with kids that were being forced bred by the dictator um, Nicolae Ceausescu. And there was hundreds of thousands of these kids starving to death in orphans, in orphanages rather. So he called and he says, what do you intend to do about it? I says, nothing. He, he was recovering from cancer surgery and I said, I'm sick. I said, you're sick and I'm busy, leave me alone. And he didn't, thank God. And we ended up going there, walking into this orphanage. And I had no idea when I did that, I was walking into my destiny. Wow. Listen to me. You never know the day that God interrupts your plans with your destiny. Yes. Always keep a phone in your life that God can reach you through to change who you'll ever be. And, and so we, we changed our ministry. We stopped singing. We were known as the Dancing Heart Camerons. We had a song called All the Holy Ghost Will Save It, a dancing that everyone sang. And then I preached on household salvation. I stopped everything I was doing to rescue the perishing and care for the dying. And I've done that now for over 30 years. Can you tell me what you saw when you went to the orphanage and be very descriptive? Oh. Well, we got there and I walked into the orphanage holding a box of powdered milk, baby milk. And I opened the, the metal doors and the smell of ammonia mm. from urine mm. and the smell of feces was so strong that I immediately wanted to throw up and, and I gagged, I dropped the box and I ran outside. And I was outside leaning against the, the vehicle that we'd driven from Scotland to, to Romania. And I'm gasping for air and my mm. father came back out and he says, get in there. I said, no. I said, you want me to go to, Moldo to Romania? I'll go to Romania. There's your orphanage. Off you go and have, I'm, but I'm not going in there. He says, you can't embarrass these people. I said, dad, I don't want anything to do with this. You go in there. I'll stay here. He says, you, you, you'll embarrass these people. And I says, if I stay here, I'm innocent. If I go in through those doors, I'm guilty. Mm. And he grabbed me. And he hauled me towards the doors and he said, uh, well, you're going to have to be guilty. And I walked into a, a Dante's Inferno, but it was freezing cold. No ref the, 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 the radiators were barely on. The kids were in their cribs with no um, sheets or any bedding, just horsehair mattresses. And they were, and they were messing in, the, in, in their cribs and they were flopping over to the next crib. They'd climb over the cribs. So they were covered in each other's waist. And um, I walked in this room and this wee boy was standing, covered in, 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 he was naked from the waist down, covered in waist. All around his hairline was raw with, um, I don't know what it was, something was eating or an infection. And when I went in, the, the Spirit of God spoke to me, like as, as clearly as I'm talking to you, that's your son. Mm. And I went over and I picked him up. The, the photograph on the cover of the book, The Bummer Lamb, is the, the day I found him standing in his crib. Mm. And that is the wee boy in his crib that I found. I picked him up and I says, I don't know how. I, I don't know what to do, but I promise you this, I will never rest until I get you from this orphanage. Yeah. And 10 months later, my wife and I, Chrissy, went to, to Romania and we got him. And in three weeks time, we had a miracle after miracle. We went in and we came out with him three weeks later back to America. And um, he has been, he's, in fact, he's right there as I'm talking to you. He travels with me and is, and is my right-hand man as we travel across this country, sharing about the need of the widows and the orphans. How did this, how did this change you personally and just radically transform your heart? Well, it let me see for the first time the heart of God. Most of our Christian walk is mechanical. We get saved and we get right. into a routine and we go to church yes. and we, you know, and. And suddenly I saw through my heart for this wee boy, the continual passion. There's no phones in those days in Romania, very, very sparse, temper, te um, temperamental. So I didn't sleep at night. There's eight hours difference. So at midnight when all my own kids and my wife went to bed, I would start calling 
and it didn't have um, touch tone, it had pulse. So I'd have to sit and, and dial this number of this woman that had, was trying to find out the background of this little boy. And I'd be there for eight hours and maybe get through for 30 seconds or a minute, sometimes never at all. And I'd go to my bed early in the morning and I'd be, I'd be lying in my bed weeping, saying, Jesus, keep that little boy safe. The picture on the book was a black and white photograph I took of him and I gave it to Chrissy and I says, the Lord wants us to adopt this little boy. And she put his picture on the fridge and every night, unknown to me, she would go through the kitchen and lay her hand on the picture and say, Lord Jesus, please keep this little boy safe because they were starving to death. Uh, they, they, uh, they never gave them any liquids because they didn't want them to, to pee in the, in the cribs. Mm. And it was, uh, it was horrendous. And I was keeping every night, I was keeping a watch, a prayer vigil for this boy. And that's the heart of God. When you're sleeping, he never slumbers or sleeps. He's always watching over you. You have to be looking at this great need of orphanages and, you know, tell us what does happen to orphans in Romania and Moldova and Russia and what does that look like and how has it affected your ministry today? Well, it's totally changed our ministry. And when a girl turns 16 in an orphanage in Moldova, they're given a bus ticket to whatever town is on their birth certificate and they're sent away and traffickers get them. One young girl in the hands of the trafficker will earn $300,000 a year for them, one girl. So at the moment, we have a village of homes called Vatra Village, the most amazing place you've ever seen. And uh, the, we, we, instead of the kids being put on the street, we go and find them when they're still in the orphanage and we tell them we've got a place of safety. And the, the crazy thing, Amy, is that now our kids are doing all the work. I, it used to be that I'd have to go to the orphanage, but as the kids have grown up and some have stayed with us, the, the head person in Moldova is a young lady called Nadia. Mm. And I found her on a park bench in an orphanage 13 years ago. And she has been the general contractor. We sent her to university to go through um, architectural design, et cetera. And she has been the main contractor to rebuild this whole village of homes, wow. gorgeous homes. So the orphans we rescued now are now the rescuers. And um, that to me is, is, is a successful ministry. Philip, uh, I was in Romania a few years, probably 10 years after the time you speak of and things had improved, but yet there were still yes. lots of orphans, uh, still a uh, lot of need. And uh, I think sometimes we get overwhelmed. We say, just like you sort of said to your father there, I, you know, you didn't really know what to do. But I know of a girl that went there when she was just 22, and all she said was, well, I can hug babies, you know? And, yep. and what, by the time I had met her seven years later, she had founded uh, her own small orphanage there and was taking care of Isn't it amazing when we just take that step, even not knowing what we can do, take that small yep. step? And that, that's the key, Tom. If you could understand that if everyone were to pray and do something, one thing, a droplet would become a, a little stream and then a stream would become a river and a river beca could become an ocean. I can't rescue every kid in Moldova, yeah. but the ones that we do rescue, we've got 50 right now in our care and we're expanding continuously. We've just opened a home in Odessa, Ukraine that can house 24 girls. And, and we decided rather than give all of them a little bit to find kids, young boys as well as girls, and completely and fundamentally change their life. We are responsible for them like our own kids. We, we clothe them, we feed them, we house them, we pay for the school, we pay for the doctors. I mean, we literally, they're our children. And the crazy thing is this, that orphans, once loved and given an opportunity, turn orphans turn to sons and daughters and once they turn to sons and daughters they be, get they get ownership of what we're doing <laughs> and then they turn into missionaries wow so tom mentioned about the caring for the widow and the orphan our own kids now are out continuously in the poorest of places in the country of moldova feeding and caring for the widow i've got a video i'm going to send you tom that i know you'll want to share with the folk of our kids a lady called Valentina, abandoned by her son because she had a stroke 
and she can no longer walk nor speak. And she lies in this filthy place. And our kids last week went and bathed her, cleaned her house, and, and just loved her. And the video is one of the most moving things I've ever seen. Orphans caring for widows. That's the gospel. Philip, this sounds like the gospel where oh, we were orphans and God made us sons absolutely. and daughters. How absolutely. has how has Jesus brought love and redemption and rescue to humanity? Well, I mean, that's why Jesus came. He came to redeem those who are lost. There's an old hymn that says, rescue the perishing, care for the dying. And if the church could understand, it's not about us. We're going through a season just now with this COVID virus, and you'd think it was the end of the world. We still live in the most blessed nation that the sun has ever shone upon. This is still the greatest nation by spades compared to the rest of the world. And if we could get fixed on those in need, real need, desperate need, this, this widow literally starving in, in this hovel, filthy beyond words, that's, that's real need. And when our orphan kids go out and care for them, what it does to our kids, it takes them from being only receivers to become givers. And the blessing of heaven is when you're a giver, Anyone, anyone can receive, but the, the, the blessing comes when you start sowing seed out the way. Mm -hmm. And we've discovered that by doing that, there is tremendous life and love and, and healing in that. Wow, thank you so much for sharing your story of love and Boy, rescue my, my. and redemption. Philip, our bummer lamb, we will link his book to our website at ctvn.org. Org. What a beautiful story. You know, we were filthy in our sins, but Jesus Absolutely. came. He is our good shepherd. He is a faithful Absolutely. father and he loves his people. We'll be right back after this break. <coughs> Here at Cornerstone TV, we depend on your support to provide inspiring, life-changing programs. As a way of saying thank you, we want to send you Keys to Powerful Prayer by best-selling author Stormy Omardian. Receive this small pocketbook along with Chosen, a 30-day devotional for your best gift. To give, call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org. Request Keys to Powerful Prayer and reignite your prayer life today. On tomorrow's Hope Today, being fearless in your city, Pastors Jeremy and... Well, we hope you'll join us tomorrow, but I am affected by what Philip Cameron had to say. I hope you are affected by it. You know, we have uh, our prayer requests that we're going to pray for, and, and certainly we all have needs. And guys, we do. We all have needs. People have needs. Anne here, she called in. You know why? Praying for her neighborhood for the turmoil in her neighborhood to end. Yeah. Amen, Ann, yeah. we believe that. That uh, it is so important that we reach out beyond ourselves, yes. guys, and see something change, Sydney. That's so true, we have an anonymous caller. You know, it's okay, you can call them, you don't have to share your name, but they're asking for strength, protection, and alignment, and actually for a godly wife as well. So we just pray over that, and I just really just sense today that God wants you to know that He is covering you with His feathers, that He is our Heavenly Father, He is our Abba, mm -hmm. He is with us. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're traveling through, whatever you're walking through, if you feel like you're in the fire, if you feel like there's storms raging around you, know that Jesus is for you, that He's with you, and He will Will not forsake you. Yes, someone's calling in for their son, Tim, who is drinking. He's like the, the little lamb that has gone astray that needs help. But guess what? We have a good shepherd who has his eyes on that son. And someone's praying for deliverance from pornography. 
and the same thing, man, when we were caught and when we were trapped, there is the Lord is our shepherd. The Lord is our shepherd. Just with Philip's imagery yes. of the bummer lamb, of the lamb that's rejected yes. by the mother. And, and, uh, and if left by itself, probably is going to die. Mm -hmm. And so the shepherd, the good shepherd picks yes. up and I remember having, I had in the seventies, I had a black light poster. Okay. Of Jesus holding a lamb. Okay. This is so seventies. Okay. It was like velvet black light poster, oh, but awesome. uh, you know, it, it reminded me that I am held in yes. his arms at all times. And you, if you feel like you're the one that's rejected, Jesus is holding you today. He is holding you. He wants to be that good shepherd that nurses you back to health. And we're believing that, that, that for you guys, let's just pray together. Father, yes. we ask in the name of Jesus that you would move mightily yes. upon each one who feels rejected today, on each yes. one who feels like that lamb that the mother doesn't want, that, the, that no one wants. Yes. And we pray right now. And if that's you, just cry out to Jesus right now and say, God, I need you today. I need you in my life. Yes. I feel rejected. I feel lonely. I feel like no one wants me, but I know you want me. And so reach out to him today. And Lord, we pray the blessings of God that makes rich, rich in so many ways and adds no sorrow with it, that you will nurse them back to health yes. in Jesus name. Amen. 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 You know. Amen. Any other takeaways there, Sydney? You know, just even thinking about today of just like how, you know, a lot of us have dealt with rejection, have dealt with those feelings of just feeling wounded. And I just want to encourage you that, you know, one thing that Jesus speaks of and talks about, actually there's a song I've been listening, Maverick City Music, and there's a song, it's called Love is a Miracle. And the lyrics are so beautiful because it talks about how you found me in the valley. And when they pushed me aside, maybe you felt pushed aside, maybe you felt rejected, maybe you felt like nobody was there. God said yes, and he stooped down low. Jesus pulled down his hand, stooped down low, and he picked you out of the miry clay, out of the pit, the destruction that you are in. And today we want you to have that hope. We want you to find that healing and that wholeness that can only be found in Christ. And we are so glad that you are joining us today. And we are so grateful that you have had this moment of inspiration, and encouragement. We love you so much. So we hope that today you would find God's healing, his love and hope for you today too. Have a good one.